Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to a new live stream, to a new live stream. Hope you guys are having a great day. Uh, today we're going to talk about Magnus Carlsen and um, him not defending his world championship chess title. Um, I think let's get started like straight away. We're going to get into this article. Um, this article is by chess24.com. So this is definitely not my particular... Um, information, but let's get through this article and take a look. So if we do this, all right, so Chess24, um, nice picture of Magnus there. He, it's official, Magnus Carlsen will not defend his title. Magnus Carlsen, uh, five-time world chess champion, uh, today ended months of speculation by announcing via his sponsor, Unibet, that he will not defend his title. The 31-year-old Norwegian is not retiring and vows to be the best in the world and not care about the world championship. That means Chinese number two, Ding Liren, uh, last round's candidate tournament. Um, as you all know, he finished second and will be the runner up in the candidates tournament, will now be um, defending his title. Wins against Nakamura has earned him a lucrative match against Jan Nipomniachi. His name is really tough to say, so I'm, I apologize in advance if I do mess it up. But Carlsen World Championship doubts. Magnus Carlsen, who spent over a decade unbroken as chess world's number one, has long and had a long love-hate relationship with the World Chess Championship. In Magnus Carlsen's story, released in early 2021, he commented, I will probably play in 2021 if i were to win i have no idea whether i would play the next one so um there is a particular um video where he announces this uh, we're not going to watch that on stream you guys can watch that i'll make sure there's links um, but if you go out to the chess 24 website uh, you'll be able to find this very quickly um, he did play in 2021 but Almost immediately after winning his fifth title against Jan Nepomniachtchi in Dubai, he gave a podcast interview to his friend Magnus Barstad uh, for his sponsors Unibet, where he commented, if someone other than Fallujah, uh, Faruja wins the candidates tournament, I will unli it's unlikely I will play the next world championship match. Uh, with that being said, um, I did watch Hikaru Nakamura's um, live stream when he talked about, I think it's entitled, I Quit. Uh, he's talking about Magnus, uh, whether or not he would defend his title if Nakamura would have gotten second. And uh, Nakamura believes that he would have actually uh, played and then let Hikaru not be in the uh, title match and he would just play Jan. Uh, one last time and then quit after that, I believe, is the um, um, sentiment that uh, Hikaru believes. And he's probably not wrong. Uh, the two of them have a really long history. If you've been following chess at all, um, it's actually kind of interesting. Uh, they've gone back and forth in the speed and rapid tournaments all the time. I don't know their specific stats on who is better than the other, but uh, they're both at the top of their game and they're uh, they're two of the best uh, players in the world, so it's no surprise. Um, Magnus announces his decision. 19-year-old Ali Reza Faruja didn't come close, and in the new podcast with the same host entitled The Magnus Effect, Magnus now reveals that his world championship adventure is over, at least for now. So here's the uh, wonderful link. Uh, you guys can see that, chess24.com. Um, he explains, ultimately, the conclusion stands, uh, one that I'm pretty comfortable with, one that I've thought long about for a long time now, I would say for more than a year, probably a year and a half at most since long before the last match. Uh, and I've spoken to people in my team, I've spoken to Fide, I've spoke to Jan as well, and the conclusion is, yeah, it's very simple that I'm not motivated to play another match, I simply feel that I don't have a lot to gain. I don't particularly like it, and although I'm sure a match would be interesting for historical reasons and all of that, I don't have any inclination to play, and I simply not play the match. Anatoly Karpov and Hyo Yifan 
both gave up the FIDE World Championship titles as they didn't agree with the title being decided in a knockout. But you have to go back all the way to Bobby Fischer in 1975 for the last player to give up the title rather than defend it in a match. The difference, however, is Magnus has no demands that weren't met. Um, I don't know that that is actually true. Um, he goes on to state in this particular match or this uh, live stream or things like that, that he has some very deep suggestions about how the world championship should be played. And I'm not sure Fide is actually going to break on that. So this last line, the difference is, however, is Magnus that had no demands that weren't meant. I think that Magnus knows for a fact that Fide is not going to change and decided just to give it up. That's my opinion on that. Um, but I believe he probably does have demands and it's just not being talked about right now. Um, it may come later. I'm not sure. Uh, it's obviously all speculation at this point, but I find it to be really quite interesting. Um, but Carlson's last minute negotiations with Fide. See, this is where, you know, this last line doesn't kind of meet everything. So Carlson's last minute negotiations with Fide. It was reported that Magnus Carlson had a 40 minute meeting with president of the World Chess Federation, Fide, Arkady Dvorakovich, I'm sure I'm Dvorakovich, uh, and the Fide General Director Emil Sutovsky in Madrid the final weekend of the candidates uh, when it was already clear that Jan uh, would be would earn the World Championship rematch. Um, that meeting was widely thought to have been in a discussion of what might make Magnus play a new match possible, but Magnus explains it uh, was mainly about communicating his decision. So essentially Magnus went to Madrid to go to the candidates to actually inform Fide and Jan or the next um, candidate uh, for the world championship that he's actually not going to be playing out of respect for them. Um, but what's really interesting is there was actually a, during the candidates match, the president did talk on an interview with the commentators about um, the him having a deadline or not having a deadline, and there's some sort of miscommunication on that. It's really odd. As many of you know, I was in Madrid for the conclusion of the candidates tournament. After the conclusion, I did agree to meet with Dvorkovic and Sotovsky from FIDE to talk a little bit. I did not have any demands or suggestions for that meeting. They did have a couple of suggestions, but the gist of it was that I was there to tell them I would not defend my title for the next World Championship match, and we had a small discussion. They had some suggestions. Some of them I liked, some of them I did not. Carlson began his World Championship Chip uh, career on a whim. Magnus Carlsen has been surprising onlooker since November 2010 when already clearly the world's best player, he dropped out of the 2011 candidates matches. He published a letter complaining about the system, uh, but few found the explanations convincing and Magnus himself later confessed it was more about the motivation. Uh, his suggested changes were implemented, however, he did play in the 2013 London Candidates Tournament, uh, but he revealed in a podcast that he very nearly didn't. It's uh, been obviously an interesting ride since the moment I decided to play in the Candidates in 2013, which was, to be honest, on kind of a whim. I just at some point decided that I'm going to go give this candidate a try. Uh, could be interesting ever since the world championship title was obviously given me a lot. Uh, it's opened a lot of doors. I'm happy about that. So, yeah, he was a reigning champion for 10 years. Um, he beat Anand six and a half to three and a half uh, in four, 2014, six and a half to four and a half. He beat Karyakin um, in the tie break three to one, and then he beat Karwana 2018 in by three to one and then um, seven and a half to three and a half Nipponiachi. This was uh, honestly Jan's really poor showing in this particular um, instance. Um, I don't think many people were impressed with his showing and after his game six in the last world championship in 2021, it, um, I don't think many people thought much of him when he was coming back to the candidates this year, but he had an amazing showing. So congratulations to Jan for such a fantastic showing this year. Um, 
The uh, article goes on to say, Magnus scraped to victory uh, at a last four round thriller. Um, you guys can read the kind of the rest of this article. It's really interesting. Um, but overall, Magnus is just, he wants to play um, more uh, creative chess is the, the gist of the article that I, what I read is that um, he, he thinks that the um, problem with the World Chess Championship right now is that you play the same openings. Uh, you're looking at lines in the Petrov, which for a lot of top players is rather boring, and you're looking for minute uh, improvements over the board uh, to maybe gain a small, very minute advantage, and he's just not having a lot of fun with it. So I think he wants to get back to the time where he just gets to play tournaments and he doesn't really have to worry about preparing for months on end to play a bunch of lines that are really boring. So I think that's why he really was looking forward to playing Ferruja because he's young. I mean, he had his 19th birthday during the candidates and he's decided that if this kid gets to play that I want to play him because he's coming up with new ideas and he's playing very interesting chess However, if you look at how he played in the candidates, that interesting chess didn't get him very far in the candidates, um, probably just because he's young and he hasn't really refined his style yet. Um, that's at least what I look after giving a lot of thought to and a viewing of the candidates. But um, is, Magnus is Magnus Carlsen retiring from chess? No, the big difference compared to Bobby Fischer is that Magnus is very much intending to keep playing. Just so there's no ambiguity here, ambiguity here, I'm not retiring from chess. I'm still going to be an active player. I'm leaving later today to go to Croatia to play in the Grand Chess Tour. I actually don't know how he's doing. I haven't been following the Grand Chess Tour. Um, at, I'm a little bit late to the party actually posting this, but um, from there on, I'm going to Chennai to play in the Olympiad. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And the Norwegian team are seated as number four there. Then off to Miami to play in uh, the real highlights of the year, I feel the FTX Crypto Cup, which is going to be awesome. And then right after that, the next event is the Grand Chess Tour, the Sigfield Cup. So I've got a lot of chess coming up. I enjoy playing tournaments a lot. Obviously, I enjoy them a lot more than an entire... And then I enjoy the World Championship. And frankly, I don't see myself stopping as a chess player anytime soon. Um, I believe he... Yeah, here it is. Uh, unprecedented 2900 rating remains Carlson's goal. Magnus Carlson uh, reached currently rated 2864 with a record peak of 2882. Isn't planning on playing for fun. However, he commented, I hope to be able to edge closer to one of my big goals, which is to make the 2900 rating. It's going to be tough. Obviously, at the very least, I've managed to keep my rating this year, This uh, which is at least something. It means that the goal is not further uh, than it was earlier, although it's tough, but we'll see. Uh, I'll just try to do the right things, trust the process and enjoy. Frankly, I'm excited to get back to where I was in 2011, 12 and the start of 2013, where I was all set on trying to improve, trying to be better, do the right things, play in tournaments, be the best in the world and not care about a world championship. So, um, it's really interesting. Um, I think he this is the 2900 rating is going to be really tough for him because he's got to be playing people that are higher rated than him because gaining rating points against people that are 2700 and 20, you know, 2800 is not going to help him a whole lot. So it's going to be very, very difficult to reach the 2900 until his competitors reach him in what is uh, going to be very difficult in rating. Um, the level of his play, um, the level of his competitors has to raise for his rating to raise. So it's going to be really, really tough for him to be able to do that. Um, but it's certainly a great goal and he'll be the first to do it if he does it, which I'm excited about. And the fact that that's his goal right now is pretty awesome because we might see some really cool chess games at this point. Dingley Ren versus Ian Nipomniachi for the title. So this is gonna be a really interesting world championship to uh, take a look at. Um, I believe he is the first person from China to make it to a world championship. So 
Uh, that's pretty amazing for China. And um, he had a pretty decent showing in the candidates, though his first couple of rounds were not so awesome. He finished really strong and took second. So um, huge congratulations to him. I look, I, I really look forward to um, continuing on the, uh, see how this kind of goes, um, which is gonna be pretty interesting. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to this match. It's gonna be really fun. So. Uh, I, a lot of things are changing in the chess world, that's for sure. I, I don't think a lot of people were expecting this to happen. Um, I fully expected Carlson not to play. Um, he's not one to not follow his word. Um, he's always been pretty honest when he says something. And the fact that he said that he'd only play if Feruja uh, or Ali Reza Feruja won, um, he's living up to that world. So he's obviously not playing, um, which is very interesting and pretty exciting. Um, that he did that. Uh, some people think it tarnishes the world championship. Um, he was even asked in a in an interview on another video during, I believe the last, I don't remember which one they were talking about. Um, there were, There's a current tournament going on right now and he was interviewed and asked whether or not um, he cares about uh, devaluing and he says it's not his problem. So Magnus is doing what Magnus does best, which is not care what anybody else thinks and kind of just does his own thing. So kudos to him for being such a great champion and kind of not really caring what Fide says. Um, there's been a, always a lot of speculation and controversy about how Fide does their stuff. So I know that a lot of top chess players um, and grandmasters have express their concerns and problems with FIDE. I wouldn't have any experience on that, so it's all speculation to me, but um, though I'm not even FIDE rated, I can't really speak to that, but um, at some point I'll probably have some sort of experience with that when I start trying to go for those types of ratings internationally. But um, yeah, really interesting that uh, since Bobby Fisher, he's the first person to do this and just relinquish his title and say, I don't really care. So the really great thing is, is that he's going to continue to play. So I'm pretty excited to see what else he comes up with. So, all right. Uh, what do you guys think? Uh, why don't you guys leave your comments down below? I'd love to hear what you guys think about uh, the world champion uh, not wanting to play. It's, you know, it's not unprecedented, but it hasn't happened for 50 years almost. So, uh it's it's rather interesting uh, to see uh, a chess person want to just stop playing for the world championship. Uh, like you said, he's got nothing to gain, so why continue on? Um, I'd love to hear you guys' comments. Please leave your comments down below. Let's discuss what you guys think. Do you think it's bad for chess? Do you think it's good for chess? Uh, what do you think about the drama with uh, Fide? Um, saying that uh, he's got a deadline, but uh, I, I find it really interesting and ironic that he decided to announce this on International Chess Day on June 22nd or June 20th. I can't remember the day, but um, it, this was a few days ago. So it's really interesting that he decided to use that as the, the day to notify everybody. But all right, friends, I hope you've enjoyed this episode or this video. Uh, this is my thoughts on Carlson. Um, I'm looking forward to see what happens. So leave your comments down below and we'll check it out. Um, I look forward to hearing from you. Have a great day.